Welcome to Conversate, our podcast where we engage in conversation. We are back uh, after a little hiatus in the month of April. Uh, Kevin and I, Aaron, uh, we're back on the brown couch uh, sharing about uh, chapter 28 in the story, which is about the birth of the Christian church. And so in doing that too, our conversation naturally uh, lends itself to talking about uh, our own roles as fathers. And so we'll share some stories about that and how being fathers has helped teach us things about God. And then uh, we'll also share some about this this birth of the Christian movement, what we can learn uh, from them. So as always, we hope you enjoy it. Hey, Kevin. Aaron. Greetings. 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 I gotta say Why'd four say times. Why? Because it's been four weeks that I haven't uh, seen you on this couch from this angle. That's right. With this mug. Right. With a camera pointing at us recording our conversation. Almost forgot that was there. Oh, it's intimidating. This is how I start my conversations with you. <laughs> this is how Kevin and I have all of our meetings. We just sit here like this. That's right. This is why I got the crick Ga- in my neck. Yeah, gaze into each other's <laughs> eyes. Uh, no, it's been, it's been, uh, it's been a long time. I've uh, I've missed uh, conversating with you mm. in this in this kind of way, and I know many of you have missed having us. So we're back. We're back uh, from our little hiatus. Um, April was a good month. Mm. Um, you know, it was a little little hectic, um, just with uh, just with the Holy Week stuff. And I had I had a week of vacation after that. You had you know two weeks and a new baby and all that stuff. So that mm-hmm. was kind of why we put Conversate on hold. <laughs> yeah, life, a so, balancing act. Yeah. So you have another child. Yeah. A second born, a son. Mm-hmm. My favorite kind. What? Second born sons. Second born son? Yeah. Is that? That's what I am. Yeah, that's right. You're a second born too. Hey, though. I'm Let's a go. second born son also. Oh, man. Cheers. Oh, there you go. And I have a second born son. That's right. So. We talk, <laughs> Molly and I, well, I don't really know that Molly joked about it. I joked about that. I'm trying to model my life after yours, Aaron. So. Hey, you know, have at it. We're going to do our best. Okay. What's the age difference between Max and Hazel? 22 months. Oh, man. All right. We were, we're behind. Yeah, we are. Well, you can average it out on the next one. <laughs> yeah. It's been, it's been. <clears throat> we got, ours got longer and longer. So it was basically two years between Hazel and Max. Mm. And then a three-year gap between Max and Phoebe, and then a four-year gap between Phoebe and Ari. So, sure. you know, I was actually thinking of you, like, and thinking about Phoebe when uh-huh. Phoebe, because Phoebe, so she would have been, I guess, born mm, a little bit before Molly and I got up here, year, year and oh, a half, maybe. Well, longer yeah. was she? I'm trying to think how old she was when I met her. How old is she now? She's gonna be five. She's gonna be five. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Okay. So she's been around a while. Yeah, 2017. Okay. But I was wondering, like, because at the time, uh-huh. were you the sole pastor here? When Phoebe was born? Yeah. 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 So how, do, how did you manage that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of like parenting, isn't it? You know? Like, yeah. It's, you don't really, I don't know. It's not like you think about it a ton. You can plan to some degree. You had a sermon about that recently, actually. Yeah. During Lent. It was right about before what? we had, it was, you, you, uh, I think it was on a Wednesday. And you're talking about what to expect when you're expecting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can read books and things, but, like, you really don't know right. until you're in it, yeah. you know? Yeah. I did that for your sake. I appreciated that. <laughs> it made me feel a lot better. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's been, it's been going well. Like, uh-huh. it, there is a big difference, uh, at least for us so far, of having done something and now coming back around a second time yeah. and, you know, knowing some of the tricks of the trade and also just having, like, I think, your expectations set um maybe more in tune with reality yeah you know or it's like like we would get at least i would get overly i think worked up or concerned about every cry and you know oh, okay it's like this but babies do that a lot yeah you know um so yeah so it's been it's been much smoother uh come around to to parents of two but it is adjustment it's it's different i think that transition to two is that's hard I mean, I don't know if it's hard. Like, again, you just kind of, you just do it. Like, I mean, what, you know, you're there, you got to figure out and just live, you know, it's life now. Yeah. Um, but I, I think like ment- mentally, just that shift from like, all of our attention was just on this one. And now, now there's two, you know, and I, I don't know. 
I remember, I remember, I remember before having uh, Max, our second. I remember thinking, like, uh, before he was born, when we when we were expecting him, thinking like, I don't how 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 do people have the capacity mm. to love more, like more than one child? Yeah, you know, I I just couldn't. When we just had Hazel, like, uh, I mean, you know, there's a great deal of love there and attention and all that stuff. And it's like how it's not possible. Is it? It's not possible to to split that up. Like, how right. do you? And I don't know. I mean, again, you just love all. You just love them all. Yeah. I, it probably is. It's different. It's a different experience. That's why you know, firstborn kids have all their, uh, you know, all their you quirks. Know, no. Yeah, that's the, that was a nice. That was the word. That was the word. I was, I was gonna say weirdnesses, but that's not. That sounds yeah. beat me. Yeah, yeah. I'm only saying that because I'm because I'm younger. Because I'm not the oldest. That's you know? right. That's right. We get to say these things exactly. about our older siblings. Exactly. That's the beauty of being second. Yeah, exactly. I try to I try to listen to and and <clears throat> really grasp a hold of the advice that uh, elders give you too, because they've been around and they've had their kids and their kids have grown up and maybe had kids of even their own now. Right. And so often they will say like you know really enjoy it because it moves fast you know and uh so i'm trying to do that it's hard though when you're in the thick of it all yeah it's hard to slow down and just appreciate uh mm-hmm. life in the moment yeah we're always kind of like i find myself either looking back to previous moments and maybe mm-hmm. romanticizing the past or looking forward to uh, maybe things will be easier when we hit this stage of life and kids can manage things themselves but yeah. all the advice you always hear is no like Appreciate where you're at right now. For sure. Because it's going to go. And and I think there was some of that, you know, uh, to loosely take this to Sunday. Are you transitioning already? Transitioning already. No, they don't want to hear about new babies. <laughs> they want to hear about the word of God. No, I don't know. <laughs> if you want to hear about more baby stuff. I do have a, well, I have a question for you. Phone in. No, please, please. No, no. You can, you can oh, do a transition. Well, the transition was just, um, you know, uh, uh, that idea of, of something being worth it. Right, like we know, you know, you have a new kid, and like, I don't. Well, there's a song anyway that says, I "Never, uh, uh, never heard the mama say should have never had that baby when the doctor holds the newborn on display." And I think that's true. Like with kids, generally, people are going to say, "Oh, it's worth it." Uh-huh. You know, I, I, well, but I guess that's not even that's not true to life. I mean, there are situations where people do say or think that this life isn't worth it. You know, uh-huh. um, but I think there's probably more damage and and emotional trauma that comes uh, uh, with that as I understand it yeah so but anyways yeah so so this idea of, of something being worth it but mm. hit me with the question well I was just gonna say I mean this is a broad this is a broad question but it, um, it can also transition to what we're talking about on Sunday we'll get there we'll all, right, get there. all right. this is this is good stuff though <laughs> um, but as like as a dad how has how for you how has being a dad shifted your understanding of like of who who God is, or like our, and who who we are. Has it like have you have you thought through that ever? Like, just mm-hmm. do you feel more in tune with God as Father? Or yeah, yeah. Or? I I think I think it, at the at the very least it it gives you a way to understand experientially that piece of God's nature, God mm-hmm. as Father. And for me, it really hit me uh, first time around with Lily, middle of the night. You know, rocking her in a chair because she was, you know, just not sleeping well and crying a lot, and and you're there, and like all you want to do is soothe their kid. Yeah. You know, like you just want them to to be settled. Like mm-hmm. you don't you don't want to hear their cries. And we would sing this song, and, and actually we still sing it to Lily. It's that you know, like classic, um, like hmm 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 hmm. Yeah. You know that lullaby. Hmm 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 hmm. And we put words to it. We put Lily's name in it, and. Uh, and we would sing that to her when she was going down, and sometimes I'd sing it to her even when she was crying, and I was rocking her. And uh, I know in the uh, one of the prophets, it might be Zephaniah or Zechariah, somewhere in there, it talks about God exulting over us uh, with song, hmm. you know. And I thought of that how, like, I just want I want my child to have that peace of knowing that they're loved, protected watched over, that I'm here for them. You know, they're crying, right. and they're crying because they need something, right? right? And, you, I mean, they might need a change, they might need to eat, but in essence, they need you. Right. Like, you are their life. Right. They're completely dependent on you. Right. And uh, and it was, yeah, rocking Lily in that chair and thinking about, oh my gosh, you know, how often have I kind of cried, and maybe not always out to God, 
Like mm. we cry, you know. I mean, like sometimes our cries aren't, they aren't aimed in his direction. They're just kind of out there because like I'm going through something and this is tough and I need help and man, this is frustrating and man, it's wearing on me and just I, I need something. I need somebody, you know. And then that reality that God has us in His hands and He hears our cries and He is actually He is actually trying to soothe us, mm. you know. So. Super cool. Yeah, that was mine. I don't know how about you, man. I mean, there's, uh, there's so much. Honestly, there's so many elements. Um, I just, I, I'm just going to just tell a quick story, but yeah. um, there's definitely all the stuff that you've said, too, like just from my perspective as dad wanted to call my kids and, and all that stuff. I, but oftentimes I, I think about it, too, like in, in my relationship now with, with, my, with my children, um, I oftentimes think about it like through the lens of prayer as well. Um, so prayer really is like our conversation with God, our ongoing conversation with God, mm-hmm. our asks, our wants, our thanks, all that stuff. Whatever, whenever we're talking to God, that's that's prayer. Um, and uh, so my like my kids talk to me a lot, you know, and they bring requests to me. Uh, sometimes they're dumb. Like I mean, honestly, like um, <laughs> sometimes they're not not timely you know all the stuff and and mm-hmm. so sometimes as like a, as a dad sometimes i answer no sometimes i answer yes sometimes i answer not yet not right now mm-hmm. <laughs> um all those things um <clears throat> but then sometimes as dad also I, d- I don't just wait for my kids to um make requests of me i i actually bring things to them without without them mm. asking of it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, which is, th- that's really fun. Cause that's like, that's what grace is, right? Where God just gives us these gifts when we didn't even ask for it. Mm-hmm. So that's really fun as a dad to just like surprise the kids with stuff, right? So the other day though, I, it was a slight experiment, uh, honestly, but I, uh, I gave my three oldest kids a quarter cause they still think that quarters are cool. Yeah. And, uh, I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not gonna tell you which kid responded this way. All right, so I'm gonna. I'll save their anonymity. Good. But uh, I, I gave a, I gave a quarter to my three oldest kids because they still think a quarter is cool, you know. And I and I handed them out, and one of my kids looked at it right away and said, "Can I have a 2021 instead?" So they like some of them are they're like keeping track of what year they have quarters from, oh, yeah. and they didn't. Well, this one didn't have a 2021 yet. So I out of the goodness of my heart, just randomly decided to give you a quarter, right? Instead of saying, hey, thanks, dad, that's awesome. Right mm. away, the immediate response was, I'd rather have something different, you know? Like, <laughs> sure. It's just like, and how, how often we do that to God, you know? Mm. It's just like, mm-hmm. so there are so many of these elements and it's just, I, I think if like as parents, if we can kind of be in tune with that, like yeah, it helps to shape like our own experience with God and like, Again, not perfectly. God is different than us, but again, mm-hmm. He is our ultimate Father, and um, I don't know. Yeah. Well, and sometimes it's the differences that really stand out too, because the other, I think, the other big one for me has been <clears throat> when it talks. The Bible talks about God being slow to anger, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and abounding in steadfast love. <clears throat> sometimes you read the Old Testament, and you're like, well, I don't. It doesn't seem like it. You know, it seems like there's a lot of wrath. It seems yeah. like he's not real patient, you know. Yeah. But then I think about my, take one day in my life with my, you know, daughter. And how patient am I, you know, oh, with man. her requests yeah. or her behaviors. It's really easy for me to snap, like, much faster than could be characterized as, you know, patient. Yeah. And, abounding in steadfast love yeah. and slow to anger you know yeah. so that's that's giving me a lot of appreciation oh, yeah. that way too yeah and my wife and i were just talking the other day about how unfortunately oftentimes like we're trying to be conscious of it but it seems like our default response to the requests of our kids is is no mm-hmm. <laughs> instead mm-hmm. of like instead of like hang on like i gotta i gotta think about it but like we, we sometimes respond no as a as a moment where it's just like I'm not not ready to answer that you know yeah but we're we're just talking about like hopefully like we want to think about how that maybe that does that affect the kids where it's just like we're asking mom and dad for something it's our, it's our request and it's just like no you know sure and instead of like we just weren't ready to hear that request so it it might not be no it's just like 
hold on a second. I gotta. I wasn't ready for that request. That's that's what that meant, you know. Right. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There's lots of learning for sure. There is, yeah. But I mean, hopefully, as you listeners think about this, I mean, just think about your own experience. If you have been a parent, uh, you've definitely been a child, right? You know, <clears throat> um, yeah. It's it's a worthwhile exercise to think about God's relationship to us. Yeah. And it's and pretty incredible how relational God is in that mm-hmm. sense. I mean, I don't know that any other God out there. I, I mean, I'm no expert on world religions. Yeah. Um, but I don't. I think the concept of God as a father is pretty unique, maybe to the to the Christian faith. Yeah, well, especially a father that relates to us in grace and love and all that stuff too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But let 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 us chat a little bit more about sure. uh, kind of what about you were. Sunday. Well, well yeah, about Sunday. and we can I think mean, too. I mean, like this this chapter, we can broaden it out even <clears throat> uh, in the story. Anyway, is really a chapter about. Uh, God's family about birth because uh-huh. this is the birth of the church, right? Right, right. Um, which is kind of interesting. I mean, like Jesus talks about building his church before he's died mm-hmm. with Peter, right? So Peter says, you know, you are the Christ, you're the Son of the Living God, and Jesus, is like, you're right. And on this rock, you know, oh. which is like this confession of who I am, right? Well, that's what the name Peter means too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like a double entendre there. Uh, I'm going to build build my church. Um, but I think, you know, we don't really talk much about church until Jesus has died, risen, and ascended, right? Mm. Yeah. And I've even heard, like, this idea that, and this gets a little graphic, uh, so hopefully you are familiar with childbirth, but in childbirth there is blood and mm-hmm. water. Yeah. And, and so it was, too, with Christ's death on yeah. the cross, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, the blood and water that poured forth from yeah. his side uh, is kind of this m- a metaphor or imagery anyway of of this of what what's going to spring forth from this and it's new life yeah, yeah this new life and this this birth of the of the church and even in even in church today maybe we don't always think about it um, but I think commonly with baptism you know we talk about that being new life and again here it's water at least there's not blood right. usually <laughs> in the Lord's Supper there is blood though yeah I mean, right so, so it's all this kind of birth language yeah yeah, but what's I don't know what strikes you about um, the birth of the church, or you know this this uh, it was like the first ten chapters of Acts, I think, right, right, yeah. that, that the story kind of covered. Yeah, and I was already I'm preaching next week about I mean it, it expands mm. the family expands, so I was that's what's fresh in my mind. But sure, uh, thinking about the beginning of it though too, um, uh, I you know I mean. I don't, I don't think you did you you didn't really talk about Pentecost no it didn't, didn't even come up really I don't think I mean you talked about the work of the spirit and stuff mm-hmm. but I think like that's the that's the marvelous thing like at uh, at the beginning of the book of Acts like um, so well coming out of coming out of Easter again so we're following this narrative right like I, I like to put myself in the disciples' shoes. So if I were there with Jesus that last week of his life and he dies on Good Friday mm-hmm. and I lock myself in the room and I'm like, oh man, our king is dead. Yeah. Right. He shows up, you know, on Sunday and he's alive. And you're like, whew, cool, great. And he opens up the scriptures to you and you're like, whoa, okay, all right, I think we got this, you know? And then 40 days later, you're with them, and he's telling you, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you. You guys, I want you to go and make disciples. I want you to go to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and be witnesses. You know, and you're like, all right, he sent us before. I think we can do this. And then he's like, no, and then I'm going to send my spirit on you and wait in, wait in Jerusalem until that time comes. And you're like, mm. okay. And then he ascends into heaven, and you watch him, like, go up. And you're like, okay, I don't. He's gone? He was gone before. And, you know, you're like, ah. And then the angels show up. And the angels show up and say, why, why are you staring off into heaven? Don't, you heard what he said. You don't, don't you know he's going to come again in the same way you saw him go? So go and be about his work. You know, you're like, okay. And then they go back to Jerusalem and they hang out for 10 days. And then this Holy Spirit comes upon them and fills them up. And then they're speaking in other languages. And thousands of people come to hear the good news of Jesus. And it's this whole, like, um, I don't know. So, 
we're at you know this day of Pentecost where they're just like filled up with the Spirit and speaking in languages they don't understand and didn't know that they could speak, and uh, people are coming to faith in Jesus, and so. Um, I mean, all of those things are guided and directed by Jesus. Jesus knows all of those things. Mm -hmm. He even tells mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. all in advance these things are going to happen. They right. just don't quite get it ever, right? Um, but then when that spirit comes, it's like, okay, this is, this is Jesus. We're going. We're yeah. moving. <laughs> Jesus is doing it. The, this, the wind of the spirit is, is, is blowing us uh, forward. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then... Sorry, and then one more thing. Oh, this is, yeah. The the message in the earliest chapters of Acts mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. is that bold declaration that Jesus rose from the dead, mm -hmm. right? So coming out of Easter, like on, in my sermon on Easter, I think, I mean, I always, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I always preach on Easter, like death isn't the end, right? Mm -hmm. You're going you're gonna to live, you're going to rise from the dead just as Jesus rose from the dead. Therefore, we have nothing to fear in this life because ultimately, if yeah. death doesn't win, what, what can win right. over us who are in Jesus? Mm -hmm. So there's that Easter hope. And that's what, so you couple that with the, the Holy Spirit and this Easter hope, like that's why these guys are just like, like we'll put it, we'll we'll. Like that is the message, right? Mm. You killed Jesus, God raised him from the dead, right? You killed him, God raised him from the dead. Jesus is alive. Mm -hmm. We have the Spirit. Um, I mean, you just see this. Like a lot of times, we talk about like the boldness of these apostles early on, and that's kind of what you were talking yeah. about, right? But by no means is that like a. That's not sisu, <laughs> you know. No, that's not, yeah. the, uh -huh. that's not the the inward courage and determination of you know these these uh, superheroes. Right. That's this. The it's just the power. I mean, it's the power of the spirit at work and the full conviction that yeah, Christ rose from the dead. What I mean, what what more do you want? You know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so. That, sorry, that was me talking a lot. Yeah, no, but I mean, like, you're, you're right. All you got to do is go back 50 days or a little more to see these same guys shaking in their boots. Yeah. I mean, absolutely afraid, abandoning Jesus, yeah. you know, or not getting, you know, what Jesus is trying to tell them over and over. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's like the, the, the whole story completely flips yeah. in this book of Acts. Yeah. I mean, these, these same guys are exhibit, exhibiting courage and joy, yeah. you know, uh, and... <clears throat> You know, I think even understanding, but it's not like they're out there, you know, giving like huge, deep theological speeches. They're just saying, Jesus rose. Uh -huh. <laughs> like we've seen it. Yeah, yeah. He's alive. Yeah. That means he's the savior. Uh -huh. There's new life for all. And yeah. and uh, yeah, so they have this courage, but it's based on that simple, that simple realization and, and belief uh -huh. that Jesus actually rose from the dead and that uh, nothing can nothing can stop them now mm -hmm. you know so there's they're standing in front of yeah like <clears throat> the uh, in the text we read on sunday they're before the sanhedrin you mm -hmm. know which is the same crew that jesus went before mm -hmm. you know and uh it's like they don't they're not unfazed you know mm -hmm. uh because even if these guys take their life they know they'll get it back yeah. they've already seen a guy do this yeah. you know who has promised it again to them mm -hmm. uh uh yeah, so it is pretty astounding. And I think something else that stuck out to me in that, uh, in that selection, that Acts 5, uh, a piece where they go before the Sanhedrin is um, this teacher Gamaliel. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really talk about him in the sermon either, but he's, it's really interesting what he says. Oh, I love, I love that statement. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, he's a Jew. Mm -hmm. So his skin in the game is, yeah, I don't want this to be, become a movement either right you know because like i'm a jew this i follow judaism i don't right. want this christian thing to be right. a thing but he tells the guys he says listen we've seen this happen before yep. here's a couple examples theudas you know this guy rose up band of 400 guys started a movement theudas died movement ended right all right okay how about judas the galilean here's another fella rose up he was the leader of the zealots by the way so simon the zealot uh -huh. who's one of the jesus followers would have been like part of that oh, crew yeah. but was like huh this jesus guy more captivating than, <laughs> than judas but anyways judas dies movement ends jesus gets a band of followers jesus gets killed so if this is of human origin if this is just a human movement don't worry about it right it's gonna fail these 
they'll, they'll break up, they'll split off, it'll lose its steam. Mm. And then it goes from this movement of 5,000 people, you know, at this time, to, to I mean, today it's the largest religion in the uh -huh. world, yeah. which is bonkers yeah. to think about. Um, and uh, I was reading one commentary was saying like, you know, that it'd be interesting to know what practicing Jews today think of Gamaliel. Because mm -hmm. at the time he was a respected rabbi, you know, and here was this council that the, the Sanhedrin listened to. Mm -hmm. They took his advice. Yeah. What do they think 2,000 years later of that piece of advice, you know? Mm -hmm. Like that if you're, if, you're, if you're not for Jesus, you know, like you might be on the wrong side. You know, yeah. maybe your idea of Jesus was wrong. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, so, so there in a statement you have a, an interesting prophecy anyway yeah. of what would become of the future. And we're, you know, we get the benefit and maybe we lose that sometimes. I think when I was younger, I used to think, I just wish I was around when Jesus was around, okay. you know, because then maybe I'd be more convinced or compelled by the spirit or by everything going on, you know, and I, you know, I think I foolishly imagined I'd be on the right side of history as well. Oh, yeah. You know, like we're living in a time when we have been extraordinarily blessed by a Christendom's impact in the world, yeah. you know, and to be able to look back and see this movement and see the growth and see these prophecies fulfilled. I mean, even to be on this side of the cross, you know, to see Jesus and to know of his resurrection, this is huge. Mm. We have, we have the, same, the same fuel that the apostles had, mm. the spirit and the knowledge of Jesus' resurrection. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I don't know what's, don't yeah. know, what's slowing us down. Well, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, we get in our own way a lot. Yeah. Um, and I do too. I mean, I, I put that question out there, but like, and I think you've shared this before, but just so everyone listening knows, like when we preach, we're preaching to ourselves oh, as well. For sure. I think, I, just, I think we... Um, we live with a sense of, I think we live with a sense of fear. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that fear is mis, like misdirected. Like we, we have this, I don't know, in America, I think, uh, at least in my conversations with people when we talk about proclaiming the name of Jesus or, you know, living as a Christian example or whatever, mm -hmm. we just have this fear that um, either that we're gonna upset people, we're gonna offend people, you know, what, what we hoped would actually bring people together is somehow gonna drive people further away, or we fear like people are gonna think about us weird or different, or we're gonna lose our job, or, you know, there's all these, all these kinds of fears, but um, I don't, none of us have, at least I don't think, have feared like actually for our lives. <laughs> right. Or, our lives actually been on the line for the sake of the gospel, mm -hmm. um, and not and not saying that I want my life to be on <laughs> the line for the sake of the gospel, but at the end of the day, like it, it is though, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's I guess that's where historically we've always seen the the church flourish is um, under persecution, right? Um, and I, I mean I think I think. I think that's because that that's the simplicity of the gospel. The, the gospel is a life; it's a life and death message. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's the, the the message of the gospel is victory over death through Jesus' resurrection. Like yeah. that is that is ultimately why we have hope um, that death doesn't get the last say. So when when your physical life is on the line, it's like, oh, do I actually believe this resurrection thing or not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's that's what it all comes boiling down to, and until that moment comes, it's like, eh, I don't know. You know, like it, I could kind of some practical living tips. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we muddy it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. or not hear it as as uh, as life or death as it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So but yeah, and just for, I mean, uh, my own personal walk with evangelizing or having fear of evangelizing. Uh, I I just to share like you know if, if you're listening and you're like. You're feeling down. I mean, like every day is a new day and a new chance to grow and, and build up courage. But like if you have a person in your life you've been wanting to share with, I have had a person in my life for um, tw since 2014, uh, I guess. So I'm coming up on eight years. Eight years. Yeah. 
eight years. And he knows, I mean, he knows I'm a Christian and there's been little utterances, but like I'm, I'm getting more confident uh, in sharing with him. And that's not because, that's not because of some like capacity I have that's inborn, yeah. like with the disciples. No, it's the more that, the more that you grasp um, what, how incredible it is that God has saved me, rescued me, yeah. forgiven me, yeah. and let just let that move through you and move out and, and be, you know, I don't know. I guess all I'm saying is sometimes it takes time and that's okay. Don't, don't short circuit yourself just because you're like, well, I didn't do it again, so I, it's never going to happen. Right. It can happen. Right. Let, it, let it germinate. Let it sit with you. Pray to God to restore the joy of your salvation. Right. Um, and talk to other people. That's really helpful, too. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Well, and, and you know, in your sermon, you talked about the, these guys being martyrs, mm. these Christian martyrs, guys whose lives were actually taken for their for the faith. Yeah. Um, but that word martyr... That's the that's the Greek that's a Greek word. That's the word in the Bible, but that word means witness. That's right. So, it's for real. So we think of martyr as somebody who died, mm-hmm. but the word um, martyria or uh, martyrus or however you want to say it. Sorry, I, I shouldn't. However, say However, the like Greeks it. say it. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, the word martyr is a Greek word. Yeah. Um, martyria, and and that means witness. So when Jesus says, "Be my witnesses," he's saying, "Be my martyrs." Mm. Mm-hmm. And when he's saying that, he's not saying go you, you need to go die. <laughs> yeah. He's saying, no, for real, you're like you're the word means you're eyewitnesses. So and and if that means you end up dying, well then you end up dying. That's that's but that's why they were called martyrs because they were testifying to what they had seen in Jesus. Right. And, and that's how that, that term stuck. Mm. Um but all all we've been tasked with is be it you've witnessed how Jesus loves you, you've witnessed how he forgives you, you've seen him love and forgive and change other people's lives hopefully and that's all you've been asked to share with the world let the spirit do the rest yeah. that's it right you yeah. don't have to convince you don't have to convict just share what you've seen is it you know so i think we're going to be talking more about this uh likely next week as well because there's a lot more to see and hear so yeah uh, but this is a fun conversation <laughs> so thanks for bearing with us and letting us uh, share some stories about fatherhood as well mm. um, mm-hmm. and uh we're back yeah it's good to be back good to have you back with us too and see where uh god takes us all right kevin as always good to be here with you bud yeah cheers man